Okay, so the nightmare scenario, you're hiking in the backcountry, you get stung by a bee, you get an allergic reaction that becomes anaphylaxis, you're alone, no one can render aid, and you die. The problem is, this doesn't really happen. Okay, so let's talk about this a little bit. Anaphylaxis is a life-threatening allergic reaction that um, causes facial swelling and throat swelling. Essentially, it closes off your airway. The allergen can be just about anything. Frequently, it's food, peanuts, um, shellfish, things like that, and bee stings uh, are, th are the biggies. And so one of the things that I teach is wilderness medicine, and encapsulated in that is a section on anaphylaxis. Uh, and so we talk about the process of how an anaphylaxis, an anaphylactic reaction starts and um, uh, the treatment methods for it. And the treatment method is this. In that class, we talk about treatment, which is an auto injector like this one. And uh, essentially you inject epinephrine, which is the medication into your thigh or other meaty part of your body, but the thigh works really well. Uh, and what happens is after people see this in class, they say, well, can I just get a prescription for this so that if I need it in the backcountry, I can get it. And you can't unless you have uh, an allergy um, that results in anaphylaxis. So you can't just go and get a prescription for this. With the exception of California. In California, you can get it in a good Samaritan capacity. Um, but in the rest of the country, you need a prescription and it's gotta be for you. Uh, and that got me to thinking, how often is this happening in the back country? So having worked in the outdoor industry for a long time from a number of employers, and in fact, two of the biggest employers in the outdoor recreation world, I know a lot of people, and so I started making phone calls. And the first phone call was for was to the woman who worked for my primary employer who started the outdoor programs with that company back in around 2002. And I had met her a couple times, so I emailed her and uh, essentially said, can you tell me how many times this company has has pushed epinephrine in the in the field. I don't know why we call working in the outdoor industry in the field when you're working, but we do. Um, so um, how many times have we pushed uh, epinephrine in the field? And she said, oh, that's easy, zero. Then I uh, sent an email to another person that I work for, the curriculum director for Knowles, and asked him the same question. I should point out, I did this in 2017, so all this data is for up to 2016. And he said, oh, that's an easy que question to answer as well. Knowles was founded in 1968. Between 1968 and 2015, it was pushed twice. Keeping in mind that Knowles does 30-day courses deep in the backcountry, with 14 or 15 students at a shop, running about 4,000 students a year. The other company that I work for runs about 15,000 students a year, but doesn't go as deep into the backcountry. Uh, and so he said they pushed it twice to 2015. 2016 was an anomaly year, uh, and they pushed it twice then as well. There were a handful of other uses in 2016, but it wasn't pushed by instructors. So they, essentially a student brought anaphylaxis on the course and pushed it themselves. And uh, so they don't really know if the patient had anaphylaxis or not. So that's twice in 30 something years? No, 45 years. I had one more. So the third person that I reached out to was someone that I know that works for North Carolina Outward Bound. So not Outward Bound USA, just state of North Carolina. And uh, their answer was similar, zero. Zero uses of epinephrine.
Okay, so who then, if these three major companies are not pushing anaphylaxis in the backcountry, where are people dying from anaphylaxis? To find out that, and to see how to use an auto injector, let's go back to my office. Okay, so where are people dying from anaphylaxis? Now, surely there are some people in the front country who are having an experience like I described before. You eat some sort of food that you're allergic to by accident, um, which causes an anaphylactic reaction, or you get stung by a bee, or so in some other way an allergen is uh, imparted on your system and your body goes into overdrive. And that's an important thing to understand that um, when your body gets exposed to an allergen, it has a reaction. So if you think about a, a reaction to something you're allergic to, think of like hay fever or something like that, your nose runs, your eyes water, you sneeze, maybe you itch a little. That's a normal allergic reaction. Anaphylaxis is not a normal allergic reaction. It's an overreaction. Uh, your body releases too many histamines and you get things like facial swelling and difficulty breathing, which is a life threat. So Obviously, things like that do happen in the front country, but in general, as a society, we're pretty careful to make sure that things like that don't happen. Uh, and then I thought about the time that I spent working on an ambulance. I worked full-time, three years on an ambulance, uh, as a first an EMT and then a paramedic. And throughout that process, I was also volunteering as an EMT. And when I was in paramedic school, I was doing a massive amount of rotations in hospitals. And I thought about, uh, epinephrine and realized that I had only pushed it once. Uh, and that's at least a couple thousand patients. So the question stands, who is dying from anaphylaxis? And so I did some research. I had already done informal research with people that I knew, uh, and I knew that it's not really happening in the backcountry. But then I started looking online for data. And in 2016, my dog is going to join us. In 2016, about 300 people, I think it was 380 people, died of anaphylactic reactions. And they all died in hospitals after being given the wrong medication. So that is another thing that can create an anaphylactic reaction. Uh, you can uh, get a medication that you're allergic to. Frequently, it's penicillin or penicillin-derived products that people are allergic to that gives that anaphylactic reaction. And so that's where it's happening. That's where people are dying. And so when I see people in wilderness first aid classes that are saying, oh, can I carry this? It's one of those things that we think about would be great to have in a first aid kit, but you really don't need it in a first aid kit because it's really just not happening all that much, if at all. And then the other thing like that is quick clot. Everyone loves the idea of having quick clot in their first aid kit. The fact is that most people who cut themselves in the backcountry do not need quick clot. The one thing, the one group of people that I say, or the groups of people that I say should carry quick clot or some, something like that, um, are people that work with chainsaws or axes for a living, or people that, um, that go hunting uh, or work with guns for a living. Hang on a second. So you really don't need to carry this. If you did in fact have an allergy where you had a risk of going into anaphylaxis, you can get a prescription for an auto injector like this or the more traditional one, um, which is called the EpiPen. That's actually a trademark name. And, uh, and carry this with you and hopefully you never need it. So let's talk a little bit about sort of how to use this. This is designed to go through clothing, but importantly, it will not go through, you wanna inject it in the meaty part of your thigh right over here, um, but it won't go through your phone and it won't go through your wallet. And so you gotta make sure your pockets are empty. And if you can get to bare skin, that's, that's the best of all. And you make sure you hold it like this. You don't wanna hold it like this with your thumb over the end um, with all auto injectors because you risk in a hurry having it the wrong way and putting the needle through your own thumb. And I need to stress, these only have one dose of medication. Um, uh, and so holding it like this, you jam it directly into your thigh and count to, I think, to six, and then remove it and then treat this, even though the needle I think is covered on this one, I've never used one of these, 
this type, uh, even though the needle is covered, uh, uh, I think you still have to treat it as a, as a sharp. Uh, and so that's essentially how you use it. It's also a good idea if you've been exposed to your allergen, uh, before you even use this, you take some Benadryl. Uh, 25 milligrams is the recommended dose. On the ambulance, we push 50 milligrams. Um, because it takes a while for Benadryl to start working. This works very quick, but is out of your system relatively quickly. Uh, Benadryl takes a while to work, but once it's in your system, it works for a while. So the two work really well together. So we are going to actually discharge one of these very carefully. Uh, so you can sort of see what the process looks like and we get to hear the uh, fancy talking. So that's using an auto injector if you have an actual allergy where you're risking or at risk of getting anaphylaxis please carry one carry benadryl as well but if you don't have an allergy you don't need to carry one they're expensive they're marginally dangerous uh, as you could sort of see the amount of force that was going on there uh, and frankly you don't need it okay that's it i'll see you outside <laughs> 